So if you're a fan of Nollywood, then chances are you have seen uh, some of the scenes where people get married, you know? And a lot of times the depictions that you're gonna see in a lot of Nollywood movies are from the Igbo culture. So what I'd be doing in today's video is talking you through Igbo Uncle or the wedding ceremony, you know, the Igbo way. Just in case you've probably seen the movies and it doesn't quite make sense or you'd want uh, some extra information about how it happens, well, this is it. And a little disclaimer here, there are cultural differences from community to community and so there are chances that uh, some of the explanations I'm going to give may be more aligned to, you know, certain uh, communities in Igbo land and may not be a practice in other places but there are certain uh, commonalities that most Igbo people have and those are what I will try to stick to. So first the words Igbo Anko literally mean to pour wine or as some like to call it these days wine carrying. Well that kind of explains the whole process because the man and his family will have to take wine to their in-laws or their prospective in-laws to declare their interest in getting married to the lady that they have interest in. And one simple truth that you may not know is that the Ibanko ceremony is the final stage in the marriage process. There are lots of other activities that have happened before the Ibanko, for example, the Ekoaka or Ejoese, or what we call introduction in English, would have already happened. Well, the introduction is our own equivalent of an engagement. Yeah. So before the introduction happens, both families already have some idea of uh, the interest that the man and the woman have in getting married. And then uh, what happens is the family of the groom will pay a visit to the home of the family of the bride and they sit together and they have a conversation. So usually it goes something like this. We were hunting and we saw this precious animal. Usually it could be maybe an antelope or you know it could be anything a squirrel depending on uh, what culture this is or in more agrarian cultures it could be it could be a fruit so it could be a fruit it could be palm nuts it could be flowers and then the claim usually is uh, we saw this precious thing and we wanted to get it but then it escaped and we chased it until it ran into this compound so we're here to ask for this precious thing that we are interested in. We want to take it with us so that it can, it can become part of us. Speaking of a lady as though she was an animal or a plant, you know, is not a way to degrade her or anything. You know, it's a way to say, this is precious, you know, we like it, you know, we want it. But again, the Igbo language is full of uh, figurative speeches and lots of uh, proverbs and sayings and idioms. So uh, you really can't blame us when we talk this way. It's part of the art of negotiating marriage. And then the family usually say, um, so this thing you say you found, uh, can you recognize it should uh should you see it again because we don't know exactly what you saw and besides this house is full of precious things and then usually all the ladies in the household are invited and then they'll be presented to the prospective in-laws one by one until they identify the particular person they want and then, you know, a part of the introduction process would be to ask the lady or would be to repeat the story to the lady and they would say, there is, these people have come and they say they are interested in taking you with them. Would you be interested in going with them? And the lady has to say yes or no. Now, if the lady says no, then it's over. The marriage is not going to happen. But should the lady say yes? Okay. And then the in-laws can eat cola, can share drinks, and can, as a matter of fact, begin to refer to themselves as in-laws. 
and that is when the engagement is considered confirmed so what that does is should another family or young man be seen taking interest in this lady he would be told that akajikuya that means that she's engaged she's entangled uh, she's encumbered she's no longer free and people are no you know suitors are no longer allowed to come declare interest except maybe if the lady changes her mind because you're going to learn from the way it was get married a lot relies on the lady's acceptance you know should the lady say no so sometimes when people talk about um forced marriages and all that even when a marriage is enforced upon a lady she still has to accept because should she say no then uh, the marriage uh, still doesn't happen and if she's unable to do that at this level because it's a close family event the ebonku is usually presented in the presence of the whole community and then that would be a great opportunity for her to uh, say no and bring shame on herself and her whole family <laughs> 